Hey and welcome to Daily Devotions again with me, John Dyer. Today is the 23rd of February 2018. Today we're reading Leviticus 14 together. Our key verses are from 54 and 57, which says, These are the regulations for defiled skin disease, for a sore, for defiling mounds of fabric in a house, and for swelling, a rash, a shiny spot, to determine whether something is clean or unclean. You know, there used to be a show here in the UK. It was called How Clean Is Your Home? And this show would begin by introducing people whose homes were a total mess. I mean, an unbelievable mess. I mean, the kind of home where you would wipe your feet as you left lava land on the way in. And there were two women who were the stars of the show. And they would come in and show the people how to clean it and teach them how to keep it clean, how to stop this terrifying mess come back in the future. Thankfully, I think it's fair to say that most of us like to live in something which is reasonably clean. And we put quite a lot of effort into trying to keep this goal. So maybe you have a cleaning day or a cleaning week or month. Well, in today's reading, we read that what happens when mold is in a house? Well, for God, it's like a smoke alarm. And God's way was to warn the family that they had better do something about it, because if not, then the whole household would be consumed. And we read today how God prescribes for us dealing with some infection in our house. The first step was to go and get help. The head of a house is to go to the spiritual advisor and let him know that there was a problem in the house. Verse 35. Maybe he wasn't able to put his finger on the exact problem was, but he was called to go and seek help. Then they were to clean the mess. Verse 36. The priest shall command that the house be emptied before the priest goes to examine the disease and all that is in the house has become unclean. So even before the priest had come to inspect, they were supposed to get rid of all the rot that was inside that had potentially infected their lives. Today, sin-infected houses need to get also cleaned. We need to get rid of harmful books, harmful toys, suggestive videos, violent video games, and anything else that would lead our families into living unholy lives and disobedience. Then we are called to destroy the harmful material. If mold continued to grow in the walls, then they were to severe the house, clean it to the point they would take the pollution then of the house to the dump, that they, it wasn't to be recycled or contaminated in another family. See verses 9, 39, sorry, to 41. Well, how does this apply to our lives? It means that those harmful things we find in our lives we are called to destroy. See, even if we pay good money for them, even if you paid a lot for that violent video game or that DVD, you don't want to take it back to the store and resell it where it could potentially harm another family or cause another person to sin. The right thing to do is to destroy it and God will honor that action. Then we are to replace those harmful things with things that build you up. You see, in verse 42, the old polluted stones were to re- be replaced with new stones and new plaster. Replace those harmful things with things that build you up Instead of harmful books in your home, go buy some good Christian books. Something that teaches you, something that builds you up in the faith. Everything in the house should make a statement that Jesus is a very welcome guest. In fact, he dwells in our home and he makes it sacred and sweet. And what follows in the rest of chapter 14 is a final step in going to the house of God and making a sacrifice of forgiveness. God then says, So he shall make atonement for the house and it shall be clean. If it's not dealt correctly, then the whole house needs to be torn down. The question we need to ask ourselves today is, what would we do if Jesus came to our house? Would we be pleased if he saw the inside? Or would he find it infected by garbage and sin? And how about the hidden things in our home that nobody else can see? How about the moldy stuff in our hearts? It could be that your home is infested with coldness towards each other, towards the extended family, or your home could be tinted with a toxin of self-absorbed lives. It's my time, my car, my pleasure, and so on. The leprosy of sin is destroying so many homes in the world today. The good news is that God has come and gave us a prescription here in this text to deal with that problem. And his promise is, as we read a few days ago, Leviticus 11, 44, 45, that we can also be holy, for he is holy. Well, today I just want you to reflect then on these points. Is it something harmful that you need to go and seek help over? Which half of things do you need to remove from your life and from your home? And which helpful things do you need to welcome into your life and your home? Well, let's pray. 
And Father, I just thank you so much as we've been reminded again and again that you care for our whole lives, that you want us to live a healthy life in a helpful environment. Lord, help us then to realize that we have those things in our lives which are causing us to sin, which are toxic to us. Lord, help us to replace them with things that build us up for your glory. Father, help us to seek help where we need help, where we can't do these things by ourselves. Lord, help us to talk to um talk to brothers and sisters, to our pastor, whoever you put in our lives that can help us through the situation we find ourselves in. Father, help our homes to be clean, not only for our benefit, but for that of our family and for our friends, that we will be built up into the people you're calling us to be. Lord, help us to serve you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.